What the hell was that? <laughs> a toucan is loose in the audience. <laughs> My next guests are Chicago-based music critics and hosts of the syndicated rock music talk show, Sound Opinions. Please welcome Jim DeRogatis and Greg Cott. So much to talk about. First of all, uh, it's, it's great that you're here today because the Grammys were last night. The music business constantly changing. The Grammys sometimes can feel like this weird holdover from another time. <laughs> what was your take on it last night? You know, it's usually a train wreck. It's usually an ordeal. You get through three and a half hours. But I kind of liked the little heavyweight boxing match that was going on between Amy Winehouse and Kanye West. You know? Right, right. Like, you know, Winehouse throws the right. Kanye throws a left. It feels like these are authentic personalities, yeah. and, uh, and, and sometimes, you know, Kanye's boasting. It's, it's sort of compelling in a world, in, in a, at a time when everyone's trying to be correct. It can be compelling, I he's, think. He's become sort of the Jack Nicholson of the Grammys. Everybody has to reference him, just right. like Nicholson at the Oscars. Right, in, in that way, he's probably a genius. Uh, the show starts with Alicia Keys singing a duet <laughs> with... Uh, old footage of With Frank, a dead guy. Well, for, yeah. well Frank Sinatra, yeah. not just any dead guy, which <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be as good. Uh, uh, but, um, but, okay, here's the curious thing. It feels like we've seen that before. Oh, uh, yeah, John Lennon and uh, the, ba the Beatles in a virtual duet. You know, the Natalie Cole with the dad, you know, that right. King Cole duet. I mean, that's, that's an old, uh, old play, you know, but uh, it was about honoring their, uh, their, their 50 years, you know, right. so they, but the thing was, they kept saying, we're going to talk about the future, we're going to talk about the future, but they kept looking at the past, you know. Right. I, mean, I think it'd be funny if someday someone came out and did one of those duets with footage of someone who's not dead. <laughs> there you go. Who's still around and singing? They're like, I'm right here. And like, no, 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 no. The, the German synthesizer band Kraftwerk sent their dummies out on tour for them. Really? You know, and that was it was a good, good idea. Why you stay home? I've send done the shows like that. Tour. It works. <laughs> uh, now, okay, this is what I really want to talk to you about. You are both very opinionated. You're honest I I about your opinions, uh, and you have written some uh, very honest and sometimes harsh things about musicians. And occasionally you've heard from these musicians. They track you down. And we're talking about some pretty big people like Bono. Is that, is that right? <laughs> yeah. did, did Bono, you wrote something about Bono. I did. And, and, and uh, he was not thrilled. And no. Uh, I got a, you know, I'm driving up Lakeshore Drive in Chicago and uh, to a Cubs game, actually. I had great seats, box seats. And mm -hmm. I get, you know, this call on my cell phone. I pick it up and I, and I hear, Greg, there's a dark cloud over us. <laughs> you know, this heavy Irish accent. And I go, what the heck? You know, it's Bono. You know, and it's like, you've really vexed us with what you wrote in the paper, you know, and I'm just Once like... Once he said vexed us, you knew know, it was Bono. Like, yeah. yeah, it was just like... Hey, you vexed us. That was you vexed giveaway. us bad with your dark cloud. <laughs> it's yeah, inconceivable, that's inconceivable yeah. to these rock stars that somebody might not think they're God. Right, right. Well, and we're in the paper, but so gotta, they know where to get us. But okay, but you've got to be a little... Because it's one thing when you're in your office and you're writing, yeah, I really don't like U2's latest album. Uh, but then when the phone rings and you pick it up and it's Bono, you have to be intimidated. Well, I don't know about intimidated. I, you know, you get to the point where you've, you've had enough of these confrontations that when you write something, you always got to feel like, I'm going to be standing five feet away from this person at some point in my life, and I better be able to say it with some conviction. You right. know, I at least better believe what I just wrote. So how long have you talked to Bono for? Uh, about an hour, and I was like, I gotta go, I got these great seats. And he, you know, he literally... <laughs> you got off, you said I have to go, I'm watching a, I, I a baseball I, game? I told my wife that night, I said, I cannot believe I just blew off Bono, and he called me back the following Monday and said, you know, he called come you to, back? Yeah, you know, come to I'm the not show. done with you yet, I got more no, to say. No, I got more to say. He set up a breakfast meeting. We literally sat <laughs> there for three hours and talked about... And ate Lucky Charms, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pink stars, green clovers. And let me uh, tell you, when you're in a restaurant with Bono, people know about it. It's like one of those things, that, who's, who's, that, who's that ugly looking guy talking to Do you think you came to some common ground? No, not at all. We disagreed the whole time. <laughs> really? Right, so he's desperately... still stink and, you know... <laughs> Come on, people, but people, they've had, uh, you know, good music in the last couple of years. You know, th I thought they were one of the most important bands of my generation, and uh, I think they made some great records. And then, you know, that iPod ad, but what really, what really killed me was, you know, charging their fans, you know, money to join their fan club, ostensibly to get tickets for their tour, and then not getting good tickets to the fans who paid this kind of money. I thought, you know, you, you guys have become the Rolling Stones, you know, right. you've lost the plot. Well, I pay people to be in my fan club. That's how <laughs> I do it. <laughs> You get $2,500 and just go on my website, you'll see. Uh, there are popular bands out there whose success baffles you guys. You just don't understand it, and it drives you probably a little insane. What kind of artists are we talking about? There's a couple of bands we've been fighting about forever. 
that we just completely disagree about. I don't understand the Grateful Dead at all. You know, I mean, it's all these people, the hippies out there twirling and, and, and you know, semi-naked girls and lots of good drugs. It's a great party, but I don't know why the band has to ruin it by playing for four hours or before they broke up. Okay, okay. The, 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 went on with the, the opinions expressed here are not those necessarily of the host. <laughs> you went on the road with them. I think they co-opted you. I, I, uh, I became a Grateful Dead convert. I'm not going to say if there was any chemicals involved, but I have to say, you know, the Miles Davis electric bands of the 70s and the Grateful Dead, the way those guitars were interacting, it, you know, it was a... It, no rock band has done what the Dead did. Okay, well, what's another band? Let's, let's really get people mad. I want letters coming in. I want people calling up. <laughs> what's another band? I'm sorry, I don't understand Dave Matthews. I don't understand this success. 55,000 fans in the stadium. I, you know, what, what is it you don't understand? I mean, he's, you know. I think the songs are there, but the 15-minute uh, violin solos, I don't understand those. Yeah. I don't get that. So you, you don't seem to like uh, instrumentation, the long periods of The uh, Dead? I think the Dead did solos. it well, but it was, there was interplay. You know when, when uh, the violinist and the, and the Dead solos, the other four guys, you ever watch what they're doing back, back by the drum riser? No. The, the, the cracking jokes. You know, right. they're I mean, it's like they're, it's not a band anymore. It's well, about the solo. Well, they have contempt the for the audience, thing. too. They throw in little snippets of Mary had a little lamb in the middle of their solo. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's contemporary. It? But, you know, I mean, we always say, Conan, that, that we want to start the fight, we want to start the conversation, but our opinions aren't the end-all and be-all. I mean, obviously, when we did the radio show, we took a <laughs> cue from, from, from uh, Siskel and Ebert. You know, right. I mean, they're heroes of ours. Greg edited Gene and, and Rogers Why I went to the Sun-Times. But, you know, those guys, like, know what they're talking about. They're on the mountaintop. You're just trying to start trouble <laughs> and then see where it goes. <laughs> well, yeah, we're trying to start a fight. I have a bro every, everybody's an expert. I have a brother music. like that. I understand it yeah. very well. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about a classic band, and we may have some... You guys have a problem with the, with the band The Doors, okay? Uh, yeah. now, now, listen, I'm going to risk some, some heat, too. I do as well, and I always have, and I've talked about it, and people get really mad. I love, uh, I love their guitar player, Robbie Krieger. I love John Dennis Moore, the drummer. I, I, I think Ray Manzarek on, I, you know, on, uh, on, on the yeah. keyboard, great. And then uh, Jim Morrison, all that kind of, hey, look at me, <laughs> his mind is hopping like a toad. You know, uh, <laughs> hey, do ni na ni ni, hey, moshe moshe. You know, I, uh, I, I don't see it. Yeah. I don't see it, and I've said that before. I don't get Jim Morrison. I don't get why it was such a big deal. I think it's because he died. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the alcohol had a, had a problem, you know. That, that first album, I think, was pretty great. And I got to say, the use of it in Apocalypse Now, I still love the way the music of The Doors was used in that But I movie. think it's a lot of, it's the music, but whenever he starts, uh, <sighs> you well, know, Father, like, I want to kill you! Yeah. It's like, Robert like please, Dye be poetry. nice to your dad, come on. A drunken, he's your dad. A drunken poet, it's not a pretty it's sight. bad drunken poetry, you know. It's, it's, he's like Robert Bly of rock. All right, well, let's, let's move on, because uh, I don't like people assaulting drunkenness. Uh... <laughs> It's a choice, and I think a good one. Um, <laughs> are either of you guys in a band? Because you spend your life professionally criticizing people who make music. Are either of you guys in a band? You know, I have to say, I never had any interest in being in a, ba in a band. I play piano, but I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be in a band with four guys 250 days of the year. I mean, it's, it's, it, that's hard work. You have know? you ever yeah. played in a band before? <laughs> I'm not a musician, but I am a drummer. Right. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, it's sort of like, Whoa. the guys who cover the... The guys who cover the Cubs for the newspaper. You know what? Well, you're you're going to have to find your own way out of this building. <laughs> I'm not helping you. I'm not helping you one bit. The guys uh, who cover the Cubs might play softball, yeah. and that's how we play music. You know, I play music. Right. I mean, it's just fun. Right. Okay. Uh, well, Sound Opinions airs in select cities and on the web at soundopinions.org. You've certainly uh, you've brought the fight here. You've, uh, you've stimulated some good conversation, so I do appreciate that. And uh, give my best to everyone back in Chicago for me. Thanks, Conan. Uh, okay. Jim Derogatis, Greg Cott, uh, our thanks to them. Catherine Russell's coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stick around. Everybody, fine show tonight. Uh, fine show coming up tomorrow night. Host of Mad Money on CNBC. He needs to be physically restrained. It's always entertaining. Jim Cramer will have an aneurysm on our show. So watch that. <laughs> World-renowned chef Jose Andres will be here. A musical guest, Band of Horses. Watch that show. Why not? What else are you going to do? It's late. Catherine Russell's coming up in just a second. We'll see you in a minute.
Max Guest is here with a song from her brand new album, Sentimental Streak. And on March 11th, she'll be appearing at Sculler's Jazz Club in Boston, Massachusetts. Please welcome Katherine Russell. All right. Yeah. That is how it's done. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Catherine Russell, everybody. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stick around.